These are steps that can be taken in preparation for running the EIS EMS program as part of your capital asset period H financial submission. EIS EMS should only be run for districts actively using the equipment inventory system. The 0100 asset class land items should have a depreciation method of N for no in item screen. The amounts from those tags will be recorded under the NDL Capital Assets Not Being Depreciated Land section of the EIS EMS sequential file. The 0100 Asset Class Land Improvement tags should be marked for depreciation. They will be reported under DLI Depreciable Capital Assets Land Improvement. CIP tags should not be depreciated. They will be reported under NDC, Capital Assets Not Being Depreciated, Construction in Progress. All capitalized items should contain a valid asset class. You might check this by running an EIS 304 report on all capitalized assets sorted by asset class. Please review the asset class column to make sure each tag contains a proper asset class. Item amount may be excluded or an error generated if there is no asset class or an invalid asset class for that tag. Only asset classes with a fund type of G for governmental will be reported on the EIS EMS sequential file. Please check the fund types in EIS Mains fund screen to make sure each fund is coded with the correct fund type. In order to run EIS EMS, the EIS cap flag must be set to yes. You may run the projection in mode first to detect any fatal errors. If you plan on excluding specific entity IDs from being reported, please enter them. It's good to know when running your EIS gap reports, your EIS EMS, and the EIS CD to be consistent when it comes to excluding entity IDs. An output file will be generated when running the actual option. It will be labeled EISEMS.SEQ and must be uploaded, collected, and submitted via EMISR for period H financial reporting. An EIS EMS text file will also be generated for your review. The bold references that are displayed on this actual report are not part of the report. I have included these as a helpful guide as to which OD asset class they fall under, such as NDL or DFE, and also the EIS asset class they are being pulled from. I have also included what exactly is pulled into the additions and reduction columns on the report. The top half of the report is basically what you reported on the EIS 103, your original costs, whereas the bottom half of the report is your EIS 104 depreciated amounts.